Wood here at CP the Franchise, Sirius XM, NBA radio host, creator of Knicks Fan TV. Yo, Franchise, Rick Kamla, Antonio Daniels, nice to meet you, man. Come on in here. Cam and AD, great to be on with you guys. The season is right around the corner, man. I'm, I'm hyped, so thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Oh, it's our pleasure, man. It's it's our pleasure. So, CP, let's uh let, let's talk Knicks here um a little bit. I I do want to talk Dunkers with you and uh AD will always have uh some unpredictable uh, unpredictable directions to take us. So, uh yeah. look, I, I think this happened over the weekend, right? You had uh somebody tweet out uh a picture of the Knicks um uh you know where where you buy jerseys at Madison Square Garden and they didn't have any Julius Randle jerseys up. Now, <laughs> This picture right here shows three rows of jerseys. So I'm not sure if it was selective to exclude the row that had Randall jerseys, but they intimated that there are no Julius Randall jerseys for sale at Madison Square Garden with the uh, little caption word. This how y'all feel. And uh, Julius Randall said to that on Instagram, the truth shall come to light with the emoji, with the little smirk and the shades on, okay? And so do we have drama here, CP the franchise, or is this just off-season father that doesn't matter at all? Cam, this this was a nothing burger, man. I, I was at the Usher concert over the weekend. I'm getting DMs left and right. <laughs> CP, we got to talk about this. This is a divorce on the way. I'm like, listen, man, I, I'm tapping in with Usher right now. I have no time for this. There's no chance that the Knicks are going to just discontinue a jersey right off the rip, even if a divorce was imminent. I mean, James Dolan, being the businessman that he is, would at least put it on discount before they just take it off the shelf. Ain't so, that the truth. Yep. Yeah. Ain't that the <laughs> truth. Yep. You know what I mean? So, I mean, look, everybody's waiting to see if Julius Randle's going to sign this extension with the Knicks. He is extension eligible, and uh, it, it's just left to be seen whether or not the two sides are going to come to a deal. And so un- until that day comes, I think there's going to be a lot of speculation as to what Julius Randle's future holds with the Knicks. But for right now, he's a guy that they need if they're going to have championship aspirations. What do you see Julius Randle's role being now with the Knicks because of the way that they played last year with him sidelined? Yeah, you know, AD, I think it's going to be similar, man. I think it's going to be one of the guys that's going to be uh, one of the most double team players in the NBA, a guy that can make the defense bend and make you pay. But this time, he's going to have an even better surrounding cast on that perimeter. When you think about Jalen Brunson, whose effective field goal percentage was around 70% on spot up shooting. I mean, Jalen Brunson is going to benefit from J- uh, Julius Randle's presence out there. OG Ananobi, who's been electric, from the corner, three-point shooting. Then they bring in Macau Bridges. So, I mean, this year's team is going to be the best that Julius has played for and played with. And, you know, being him, bringing him back in there, you're bringing another all-star back into the mix. I think he's going to be great for these guys. What is your, what is your expectation for the New York Knicks this upcoming season? Yeah, well, Vegas certainly likes it, man. I mean, they're putting the win total around 52. Uh, but the East is no slouch. Obviously, the Celtics deserve their respect. Philadelphia is making their move. We have to see what Milwaukee looks like. But for the Knicks AD, I think they're going to be right up there in the pack. This team is stacked. When you think about Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, you're all stars. I love that they have OG Ananobi and Mikhail Bridges to man the wing defense. The center rotation is going to be a little bit suspect. Yes, but man. overall, I think this team is going to be deep. And you know with Tibbs, one thing you know with Tibbs is that they're going to play hard for 48 minutes, for 82 games, and you can't necessarily say that with with the rest of the competition just in terms of load management of some of their stars. So I think this Knicks team is going to be right up there with the top three of the East, no question about it. CP the Franchise, Sirius XM NBA radio host, creator of Knicks Fan TV. CP the Franchise, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Are you feeling like your Knicks are going to A, beat the Celtics in the regular season to finish first in the Eastern Conference, and or B, beat the Celtics in the playoffs and go to the NBA Finals? Where are you at with that? I I think they can. But it's all going to be about their health uh, camp. I mean, last year, you know, they 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 were uh, one game away from the Eastern Conference Finals with literally uh, a half a team. You know, they, there was no Julius Randle. There was no Mitchell Robinson. I mean, they had four solid rotation players uh, out of that rotation. And, and so it was a difficult uh, ending to their season. But if they come back into this thing healthy, especially with the ascension of Jalen Brunson playing at an all-star and all-NBA level, uh, the clutch factor – 
with Brunson. I think they can beat Boston. I, I definitely do. I, I don't necessarily look. Boston, they are the champions. They deserve the respect. They had an incredible net rating last year, historic net rating. But I think this Knicks team is, is well built to meet this Boston team, especially when you factor in Ananobi and Bridges, the versatility that they're going to bring on the wings. I think they're going to be a formidable opponent for the Celtics. With with Julius Randle coming back, right, and also with the addition of Mikael Bridges, do you think that J- Jalen Brunson will be in the top five of the MVP conversation? Well, there's going to be a lot of mouths to feed, A.D., so that's right. going to be an interesting question. Right. How they sacrifice for each other, because, look, there's a lot that, that people talk about with the chemistry in these guys and the Nova Knicks, and, and all that is great. But the reality is there are a lot of guys that are going to want the ball. I mean, we can't even forget about Dante DiVincenzo on the bench, one of the best three-point shooters in, the, in all of the NBA last year behind Stephen Curry. So I, I think, you know, he may not be there. It's, it's sort of like the, the Tatum conversation, right? Like, you know, Tatum had that ex- excellent starting five, and so did he necessarily have to play at that MVP caliber level for Boston to win when there were so many guys that were capable of getting the job done? I think you could see that here with the Knicks in that you have Mikal Bridges, who was a number one option with Brooklyn, and now he's coming in here for the, to, to play a supporting role. Julius Randle, OG Ananobi, I thought, showed a lot from a shot creation standpoint as well as his prolific 3 and D uh, uh, caliber. So, look, I think there's going to be a lot of guys that can contribute on this team, and the, the depth that this Knicks team has, I think Tom Thibodeau needs to lean on that so that you don't put so much – on Jalen Brunson, and then he can ultimately get to April as fresh as possible, and then let's go from there. Mitchell Robinson, what do you like? You know, I I, I love I love Mitchell. You know, he's from yeah. the Louisiana area. Um, he's had health concerns, staying on the floor, um, availability concerns. Do you see him like it's different because in today's NBA, and we've had this discussion here quite often. Do you can you sit here and say that Mitchell Robinson will 100% be the New York Knicks starting center on opening night? That all depends if he's going to be ready. I mean, he's going to be coming off of ankle surgery. He's okay. still recovering. It's not clear if he's even cleared um, okay. for full contact. So we don't even know if he's going to be ready for opening night. Ad and a bigger question for me is: Is he going to be there for them? come April and beyond. I mean, Mitch has given the Knicks so much on the defensive side of things. His offensive rebounding uh, ability is one of the best in the NBA, but it's just a durability factor. He, he's missed crucial time for the Knicks, mm-hmm. and I think that has hurt them. But I think and another question is, and you mentioned it, the, the way that offenses are being run in the NBA, one of the questions I pose is, does he allow the Knicks to run as right. optimal as possible right. offensively? Right. Right. The way that teams are spacing the floor here and, and what they want to, to allow for Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle to operate, does Mitchell Robinson give them that? And that's why I think they're going to miss Isaiah Hartenstein, who left the Knicks for, for the OKC Thunder. So it's going to be very interesting to see if Tom Thibodeau devises a few offensive lineups where, hey, maybe it is an OG Ananobi and Julius Randle manning the four and the five to give them a little bit more flexibility there. You can have Josh Hart, McCall Bridges out there. Do they opt to go small to address their spacing needs and, and see where they go from there? And, and that's what I was going to ask you, because if Mitchell Robinson doesn't start at the five, let's say he's not available, right, yeah. on opening night, do you see Julius Randle starting at the five and them going small? I, I don't think Tibbs will get that desperate yet. Uh, just just his mm-hmm. his proclivity to lean on a – as traditional as possible of a center. And when I say as traditional as possible, I think they would go to Precious Achua at the five there just to give them a little bit more defensively. And I don't think they want to trust Julius Randle in that spot on a full-time basis. Now, right. Tibbs has shown when he needs to get desperate, he will have to make that move. And I think that's when you'll see some of Julius Probably at the four where you see you see OG Ananobi probably guarding fives, kind of like what we saw when the Knicks uh, defeated the Sixers in the playoffs. In that pivotal game four, you saw OG Ananobi was the one that took on that Joel Embiid assignment. And so I think that's where they will go. And then if he needs to, he would go to uh, first Precious and then, uh, and then a Julius uh, OG front court. I like it. CP the franchise, hanging out with Rick Hamla and NBA champion Antonio Daniels. CP the franchise – 
Are the Knicks upgraded with Mikel Bridges or downgraded losing Isaiah Hartenstein? Oh, that was that was a great question. You know what? I, I had this conversation with uh, with Howard Beck, also of NBA Radio and, and The Ringer. We had a great conversation on that. I'm going to go with the upgrade, man. Uh, I'm a wing guy. I think this is a wing league, especially with the versatility that this guy can bring. His ability to, to be able to guard uh, some ones, but definitely twos, threes, and fours. I think that's something that the Knicks have been needing over the years. And they've been getting it with Josh Hart. Then they brought in OG Ananobi, and now they brought in Mikhail Bridges. But I also think offensively, he can give them a little bit more by not just being, you know, a three and D guy. He's shown that shot creation ability when he went to Brooklyn and had to lead that team. And so he's another guy who should be able to take some pressure off of Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle to be a, a tertiary scorer for the Knicks. Because uh, an interesting stat here, Cam and AD, is that. When Jalen Brunson was on the floor, the Knicks' offensive rating was around 120. And when he was off the floor, they were around a 105. So I think the, we could see some interesting lineups when Randall and Brunson or one of those guys are off the court, where then Mikhail Bridges now, maybe he goes back into his Brooklyn bag and Tibbs says, hey, this is your unit here. Go ahead and get, and get us a bucket. And so maybe that's an interesting wrinkle in how they can use Mikhail Bridges and, and utilize his shot creation ability. Mm. CP the franchise, we're enjoying the heck out of this, man. You're bringing it. You're bringing that fire. You're bringing that heat. CP the franchise is the creator of Knicks Fan TV. Follow that on Twitter at Knicks Fan TV. Follow at CP the franchise. And he's with us, uh, Sirius XM, NBA Radio as well. CP the franchise, uh, AD gave us uh, Kemp, LeBron, Jordan, mm. Westbrook, and Vince. I gave uh, y'all Neek, Kemp, Jordan, Vince, and Morant in our five favorite dunkers of all time. What does your list look like? Listen, man, I obviously MJ's got to be there, you know, as, as a diehard Knicks fan, it kills me to even give him that credit, but you, you got to give credit where it's due. Anybody with a pair of eyes is, can see that Michael Jordan was one of the best uh, in-game dunkers of all time. Vince Carter, absolutely. The, you know, half man, half amazing. The grace, the style, he could go power, he can go finesse. Uh, Vince was just floating on air. And so I got to put Vince up there. You know, I got to put Shaq, man. You know, a, a lot of you guys, AD, you guys will, will mention Daryl Dawkins. I didn't get to see him in, in, in his prime. But when I saw Shaquille O'Neal rip down rims, break glass, and, and absolutely collapse these hoops, I got to put Shaq up there. The, the dominance of Shaquille O'Neal during his era, I, I think, has been, has been understated. And so I got to put Shaq up there just for the sheer force. I got Dominique as well, Cam. And then I'm, I'm going to throw a wild card out there because I've, I've heard a lot of the similar names. How about Stevie Franchise, man? Yeah, somebody said that earlier. Stevie Franchise? Yeah. I'm going to give the smaller guard some love, man. At six foot three, I thought prime Steve Francis was, was a good in-game dunker, man. I'll put Steve Francis up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I'm with you. It's Got some list. synergy there with the franchise and the franchise too, right? <laughs> Stevie Franchise. I like, I like how that goes. It really uh, it, it marries, yeah. man. Um, you know what I loved, uh, CP and AD uh, from Steve Francis was the lean-in jam, where where yeah. he would like he would take off with two feet and he would like lean in almost like diagonal diagonally and like you know he'd have the ball like over his ear and then he'd throw it down. AD, I mean, you played against Stevie Franchise, man, but that that like lean in off mm -hmm. the two foot takeoff, I, that that's what I think of when I think about yeah. franchises hops. Yeah, it's crazy athlete, crazy athlete, and yeah, he he he. You know, Jordan used to do like that, you know, kind of kiss the rim dunk where he leaned sideways and kind of windmilled it as well. Stevie Franchise yeah. was a two-foot jumper, and he did not the kiss the rim, but he did something like he used to really lean. He used to lean and kind of cock it back. Good call, Cam. Good call, uh, CP Franchise. Uh, CP the Franchise. Hey, CP, this has been awesome, man. Uh, we'll we'll yes, definitely sir. have you on again. Uh, your work is fantastic. Um, I'm going to come on. Uh, that you hit me up on Twitter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle back with you. We're going to figure out a time next week for me to come on. I certainly want to come on and talk hoops with you, man. We're big fans over here. All right, CP? Cam and AD definitely need you guys on the show, man. Always respect your takes. Love the show. And uh, keep up the great work, man. For sure. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate that. CP the franchise. <laughs>